What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the CWO Premier League-wide recap. In this video, we're going to be talking about everything that happened here in week eight, and there is a lot to get through. I have some incredible attacks to show you guys from our highlighted wars, if you stay tuned for that. Once we wrap up all of the standings, I will go ahead and break down those highlighted wars. We do have some breaking news coming out of Unius Exercitus after taking their loss to Valar Mugulis uh, here in week eight. They have unfortunately announced that they are dropping out from the league. They will not be replaced. So uh, any of the clans scheduled to war that were scheduled to war UE uh, are basically going to be getting an automatic win and the remaining wars that UE was scheduled for are all going to be losses for them. Uh, some tough news, uh, especially this far in the season. We wish all of the members from UE the best of luck going forward. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, as always, we are going to break down the standings. Uh, we'll go ahead and start uh, with th these four groups right here. And then we'll go ahead and cover the other four divisions. But we will go ahead and start off in the wall breaker division. Uh, starting off, FYSB and War Addicts are now tied. They are both at five and three. Uh, FYSB, if you guys remember, just I mean, just a few weeks ago, they were near the bottom of the list. Now they find themselves in first place. Uh, they did get a win this weekend. As they continue this momentum, they do have a couple wars that they have won in a row now uh, and gained quite a bit of ground considering the fact that War Addicts lost uh, against Reddit Viper here in week eight. So FYSB continuing on their surge and they are now tied in first, uh, first place with War Addicts. In third place, we have Emphatic Fury, uh, who took a loss this weekend. We'll go ahead and check out a replay from that war a little later on in the video. And like I already said, uh, UE has dropped out here uh, after completing uh their war in week eight again best of luck to those guys okay dropping down to the balloon division where we have bad intentions uh who are all alone in first place uh, holding their ground as uh, Bad Intentions and Dark Looter X both picked up wins this weekend. Bad Intentions sitting at 6-2. and two. Dark Looter X comfortably at 5-3 and three right now. Considering, even though they lost to them, COC Hogwarts is at 2-6. and six. So... Uh, both those clans technically technically have not clinched, uh, but one more war to go. And what I'm talking about is playoffs, the playoff picture. Uh, Bad Intentions and Dark Looter X looking very solid uh, for getting those playoff spots. COC Hogwarts did take a loss uh, here in week eight. They're at two and six. And we have Axew something still winless on the season, sitting at 0 and 8 right now. Uh, covering the Wizard Division, we have Above and Beyond sitting alone in first place, uh, one more ahead of Power COC and CWC Brawlers. Above and Beyond did take a victory here in Week 8. Power COC took a loss uh, there at an even 500, again sitting at 4-4. Four and four. We have CWC Brawlers who took down Göteborg's Krieger, uh, so they went up a war. Uh, gained a little bit of ground on COC Hogwarts or uh, on Power COC uh, since they lost COC Brawlers also at an even 500 sitting at four and four and of course uh, Meet the Kings have dropped out there at zero and eight uh, in the healer division King Jeffrey. Uh, finally pulling away from Fumont Lava uh, the last few weeks. They have been neck and neck, uh, dead even uh, in their win-loss records. But King Jeffrey taking a victory this weekend. From Molten Lava taking a loss. Now they have one war. Uh, they have gained a war ahead uh, of FML. 
Again, KJ taking a victory, FML taking a loss. Uh, we have Gahazi Bomber 2 at an even uh, 500. They also took a victory, a huge victory, considering that they took down one Hive Genesis, so they're at an even 500, sitting at 4-4. Four and four. And we have Art of War. Uh, they are at 3-5, and five, but not only that, uh, Art of War took down Forbidden. Uh, they cleared all 11s with their Town Hall 10s, and they also had a 10v10 triple in this war as well. Uh, it was a tie, 83-83, uh, to 83, but Art of War did beat Forbidden. Forbidden, uh, through the first six weeks, were uh, undefeated. They've now taken two losses in a row. Uh, their second loss coming from Art of War, so congratulations to them. All right, guys, the next four divisions we're going to be covering is the Dragon, Pekka, Baby Dragon, and Minor Division. Starting off with Gunma Samurai continuing their surge as they are sitting at a very healthy 7-1. Two wars ahead, <coughs> two wars ahead of Grumpy Old Men. Uh, Gunma Samurai also did take a victory uh, here in week 8. We'll go ahead and check out a little bit of action from their war a little later in the highlighted wars. We have Grumpy Old Men who, who had an incredible war uh, against none other than FYSB. It was a tie 84-84. I also do have... Uh, a replay to show you guys from that war if you stick uh, stick around for a little bit. Uh, but Grumpy Old Men taking a loss. 84-84, uh, to 84, very, very close. Uh, put up some very, very impressive numbers. We'll go ahead and break down all the stats a little later. Uh, but they are at 5-3, and three, still sitting comfortably in second place. Uh, Reddit Viper coming out of nowhere. Uh, they have just been smashing clans left and right these past couple weeks. Uh, week 8 was no different. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, they did take down War Addicts winning 85-83. to 83. I also have uh, some coverage to share with you guys a little later on in the video. Uh, but they are still in the playoff hunt. Uh, they're at 4-4, four four, an even 500, so they continue this momentum. Uh, it's only going to be looking very bright uh, for the playoff picture for Reddit Viper. Varmu Gulis, not so much in the playoff picture, but... They did pick up their first victory. Uh, again, Vlarmogulis taking down Unius Exercitus. And they have finally picked up their first win. And they definitely did it in style. Uh, wait till you hear the statistics that I have from that war. Again, stay tuned. We'll go ahead and cover that war. Uh, I did capture some footage for you guys from that war, uh, one of their 10v10s. But congratulations to VM picking up their first victory uh, here in Premier Season 3. Okay, covering the P.E.K.K.A. Division, we have our High uh definitely rebounding from their big loss that they had back in Week 7. Uh, definitely rebounding. They took a victory, a huge victory, picking up three 10v10s, uh, taking down Axie something, who did decent as well. The, the final to that war was 85 to 83 so even actually something definitely improved they also picked up another 10 v 10 uh so actually something didn't i mean they're still winless on the season uh but definitely did better uh than they have in their last six or seven wars but Varhai Bar Bar did get the victory, and they're sitting very comfortably at 6-2 and two in first place in the Pekka division. Uh, North Awakens, they are sitting right now at 4-4, four and four, uh, an even 500, definitely still uh, looking good for the playoff hunt as well. Uh, Kornfeld also having a very, very big victory over COC Hogwarts. The final to that war was 84-81, to 81, a three-star victory for Kornfeld, going 100% on their dips and picking up two 10v10s where they've struggled in uh, with their heavy hitters, uh, especially in these last few wars, definitely rebounded, looking very, very healthy going into the wars uh, for Week 9. So congratulations for them picking up that victory. They're at 3-5. and five. Also tied uh, with Dragon Rejects, uh, DR did unfortunately suffer a loss uh, here in week 8. Uh, they did drop to DLX. The final to that war was 82-81. to 81. Uh, 
Uh, in the Baby Dragon Division, we have Swarm Synergy still surging along, guys, there at 7-1. Uh, also picking up a victory uh, over none other than Power COC, the final 83-79, to and it was a very, very heavy breakdown. Stay tuned for the Highlight Wars. I do have coverage from this war uh, to share with you guys as well. Go towards Kriega, still comfortably in second place in the Baby Dragon Division. Uh, they are an even 500, sitting at 4-4 four and four, uh, after taking a loss here in Week 8 to CWC Brawlers. Assassin's Core, uh, they had an automatic win as they were scheduled to war meet the Kings. Uh, so congratulations to them. They picked up war uh, or another win. And that lead, that brings the record now to two and six on the season. Uh, so definitely a long. They had the bye week, and then they had another bye, but picking up a victory. Uh, but again, they are two and six in third place. And we have BD Unbeatables with an opposite record of Swarm Synergy. Uh, again, uh, you know they did take a loss here. In week eight, uh, they fell to above and beyond the final to that war, 86 to 81. So above and beyond getting a five-star victory over BD Unbeatables. Again, their record on the season is one and seven. All right, covering again the toughest division in Premier here, here in season three is the minor division where we have Nottingham who took down from Molten Lava. Uh, they are in first place uh, along with Forbidden. And remember, Nottingham, again, just a few weeks ago, was down in fourth place. There has been a lot of flopping around going on in the minor division. But even the fourth place uh, clan is at 500. Just again, just to highlight how competitive the minor division is. But Nottingham at 6-2, and two, taking a win. And, and uh, now with an even record to Forbidden, who took a loss. Who took their second loss of the season here in Week 8. Uh, so I definitely have to figure out what is going on there. Uh, but definitely stay tuned. I do have uh, action from that war uh, to cover with you guys. Uh, One Hive Genesis also falling. They're at five and three uh, now on the season. I uh, also have uh, footage from this war as well. Uh, they did lose to none other than Gahazi Bomber 2. Uh, the final to that war was 83 to 82. And we have Dark Avengers sitting at four and four. Uh, they also took a loss here in week eight. So the only team uh, to walk away from week eight with a victory was Nottingham. So again, a lot of switching going on. Uh, we only have a few wars left until we get into or until we find out who's in the playoffs. But we'll, that will definitely come in a later video. That's going to wrap it up for the standings. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and check out all of the incredible attacks from the highlighted wars here in week eight. CWL Premier. All right, guys, I have all kinds of incredible replays to show you guys, some incredible attacks, and we'll go ahead and start with none other than Gahazi Bomber 2 and One Hive Genesis. A lot, a lot of hype uh, behind this war. We knew how good Gahazi Bomber was in the start of the season. They lost three wars in a row and to take down none other than one hive genesis absolutely huge for the guys and girls over in gahazi bomber 2 it was still a very very close war at the end of the day the final as you guys saw it on your screen there a little added feature right there uh the final 83 to 82 and it was definitely done in an interesting fashion considering Gahazi Bomber 2 did not have a 10v10 triple, but One Hive Genesis did have one 10v10 triple. Uh, so again, we'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys as we watch uh, this hit up uh, from Sekishun uh, hitting on or, or taking down Mercer 024. Uh, Gahazi Bomber 2, like I said, did not have a 10v10 triple. But where they outshined OHG was in the 10v11 department. They went 4-4-11. So again, 
at this stage in the game, at this meta in the game, if you're clearing the 11s with your Town Hall 10s, it's only putting you in that much better of a position, which is which is exactly what Gahazi Bomber 2 did. Uh, going 7 for 8 on their dips, only having one dip fail, so definitely did well there. And for their Town Hall 9s, they did hit at 59%, providing them with a few scouts. One Hive Genesis did have a 10v10 triple, where they fell flat, was in the 10v11 department, uh, going 3 for 10, leaving one Town Hall 11 up. And they did have two dip fails, going 6 for 8. Where OHG completely smashed was with their Town Hall 9s hitting at a remarkable 76%, providing all kinds of scouts. Uh, definitely best of luck to them going into week 9, and congratulations to Gahazi Bomber 2 picking up the victory. Next up, guys, we have Reddit Viper. Reddit Viper versus War Addicts. And what a huge victory it was uh, for Reddit Viper winning 85 to 83. And I mean, they have had, they have really turned uh, the season around, especially in the last couple wars. And week eight was no exception. Reddit Viper putting up three 10v10 triples, absolutely huge, and clearing all of War Addict's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s, going four for 12, guys. Uh, so definitely their Town Hall 10s have really been putting on quite a show here in the last few weeks. And going 100% on their dips, those stats right there are pretty much, at this point in time, going to win you pretty much every single war here in Premier. Three 10v10s, clearing the 11s, and going 100% on their dips. Uh, huge, huge shout out uh, to the guys and girls over in Reddit Viper. Really turning the season around and, and bringing their record to an even record at 500, sitting at 4-4, four and four, and their Town Hall 9's hitting at 56%. Uh, war Addicts still had a decent war. They just ran into a red hot Reddit Viper. Uh, war, uh, war Axe did put up a 10v10 triple. Uh, so definitely shout out, uh, uh, for getting that 10v10. And they actually hit, be they actually did better in the 10v11 department. Uh, they went four for nine. So hitting way, way, way above, uh, the league average. Shout out, uh, the to their 10v11 guys. And also War Addicts going 100% on their dips, going eight for eight. Town Hall Nines hitting at a straight, uh, 50%. The difference, the two star difference in this war, were the 10v10s. Uh, so what an incredible war. Both clans had an amazing war and putting up these numbers would have won uh, the majority of the wars. And like I said, unfortunately, War Addicts ran into uh, a red hot Reddit Viper right now. Uh, but both clans did very, very well. Still looking very, very good uh, for each of these clans. And uh, wow, what a great war that was. Again, the final 85 to 83. Congratulations to Reddit Viper. All right, next up, we have the Clash of the Titans. Both of these clans have been red hot uh, these last uh, these last few wars. FYSB getting, uh, getting the better over Grumpy Old Men by 1.26%. Uh, very, I mean, an, also an incredible war. Wait till you guys hear these stats. Uh, this technically was a 29v29. Something happened where one of FYSB's accounts were compromised. Uh, so basically, each clan swagging uh, a pair of hits. Uh, so this basically was a 29v29, uh, you know, you know, just for the sake of everything, but we'll go ahead and break down the stats, guys. FYS begin getting uh, a, it was a tie, but getting the victory on percent winning by 1.26%. FYSB picking up two 10v10 triples, uh, definitely struggled in the 10v11 game, only going two for 11, but they did go 100% on their dips. Tahoe Nines hitting at 59%, so shout out to them. Grumpy Old Men getting three 10v10s, going four for seven on their 10 v 11s guys four for seven but where grumpy old men definitely had a bad war was on their dips only going five for eight three dip fills 
FYSB going perfect. Uh, Grumpy Men did have one more 10v10, uh, but that ended up, all in all, ended up in a tie. Uh, really, really crazy stuff, but congratulations uh, to everybody over FYSB for getting the best, or getting the better of Grumpy Old Men uh, winning 84 to 84. Okay, this was the big one right here. The big one because Valar Mugulis finally picking up their first victory on the season, guys. Uh, beating UE. Again, unfortunately, UE now dropping out of the season. Again, best of luck to those guys uh, going forward. But uh, definitely want to highlight Valar Mugulis winning 82 to 81, getting a one star victory over UE. What's more remarkable is this stat right here, guys. VM getting five 10v10 triples and doing it in style, going five for 11. Could not believe it when I saw it. Shout out uh, to all the Town Hall 10s uh, getting five triples. Uh, really, really crazy stuff. The breakdown to this war was a 4 11 15. So they did spin a little bit heavier uh, than the traditional Premier Breakdown. Uh, they still struggle in their hit-ups, only going 2 for 10, so still leaving uh, a couple 11s up on the board, uh, but what they did is they ensured doubles on those uh, Town Hall 11s. They did have a couple 11 v 11 triple attempts, but they did get the doubles on them. Uh, on their dips, they did have one dip fill going 5 for 6, Town Hall 9's hitting at 54%. Uh, UE, unfortunately, did not have a 10 v 10 triple, but where they did very, very well was on their hit-ups. Uh, they did go four for seven, so again, hitting way above the league average, uh, hitting four for seven on their hit-ups. They did have two dip fills. Nines hit at 52%, uh, but again, best of luck uh, to UE going uh, forward. Uh, again, unfortunately, they did drop out, but congratulations to VM picking up their first victory on the season here in week eight. All right, next up we have Gunma Samurai taking down Emphatic Fury, winning 85 to 84, and yet again, a red hot war. Both of these clans performing very, very well. Gunma Samurai performing one star better uh, than Emphatic Fury. This is how they did it. We have Gunma Samurai picking up a solid two 10v10 triples, and they were able to clear all of Emphatic Fury's Town Hall 11s with the Town Hall 10s going 4 for 10. And they only had one dip fill going 7 for 8. Not the end of the world. Still did very, very well there. And their Town Hall 9s hit at a very impressive 64%, providing them with quite a few scouts on Emphatic Fury's Town Hall 10s. And also Emphatic Fury having a very, very solid war, you guys. Uh, Emphatic Fury also had uh, two 10v10s in the exact same percentage, uh, they went two for eight on their 10v10 attempts. Same with Gamma Samurai going two for eight on their 10v10 attempts. Uh, exactly the same in the 10v11 department on their hitups going four for 10. Gunma Samurai also going four for 10. This was the difference, guys. Just one stat made the difference in this war with a victory in Gunma Samurai's favor. That was Emphatic Fury having two dip fills, uh, having uh, uh, their 11v10 dips, having two dip fills. They went six for eight. Again, Gunma Samurai went seven for eight. That alone was the deciding factor. Uh, you want to talk about a war that came down to the wire. This was it, guys. Gunma Samurai, Emphatic Fury, very, very impressive war. And, oh, one more stat to cover. Emphatic Fury's Town Hall 9s did hit at 54%. So they did have uh, a few scouts uh, that they were able to get out of their Town Hall 9s. But at the end of the day, it was a very, very good war from both clans. Both clans performing very, very well. But Gunma Samurai getting uh, the better part of Emphatic Fury winning 85 to 84. Uh, a one-star victory for uh, Gunma Samurai. Okay, next up we have none other than Swarm Synergy and Power COC. Te technically, this was Power COC's second war, but this was their first war that they actually played in. Uh, they did have an automatic win back in week seven. Uh, but what a war to show up in Premier to face none other than the hottest clan in the league, that being Swarm Synergy. 
Uh, but Power Seal C definitely uh, still performed uh, pretty well uh, in most categories. We'll go ahead and break that down for you guys. I'll go ahead and let you guys know what Swarm Synergy did, uh, what Swarm Syner Synergy did to Power Seal C's side of the map. Picking up four 10v10s, you guys. Swarm Synergy uh, still performing week after week after week with their 10v10s. Week 8 was no exception. Again, picking up four of them. And uh, on their hit-ups, going four for 10, still hitting way above the league average uh, on their hit-ups. So still they're very, very well there. Where they didn't do as well is on their dips. They did go six for eight. Uh, we're actually used to seeing them picking up an LMV11 triple, uh, but they did have two dip fills this war. Uh, one thing I did want to mention was the breakdown. It was a little heavier. It was a 4-13-13 breakdown, so there were a uh, few more extra Town Hall 10s on the map. So still Power COC flexing, uh, again, coming from Invite, still showing the depth of, of their roster, putting 13 Town Hall 10s on the map. Uh, Power COC, where they performed well is they still had two 10v10s. And remember, these are against Swarm Synergy bases. Where they definitely struggled was on the hit-ups, uh, only clearing one of Swarm Synergy's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s have got to improve in that category uh, to be winning wars here in Premier. Then they had two dip fails. Uh, they went five for seven, but where they did very, very well was their Town Hall 9s. They hit uh, at 65%, so watch out for Power COC's Town Hall 9s, providing them with all kinds of scouts. Best of luck uh, to Power COC going into week nine, and congratulations to Swarm Synergy. Next up, we have none other than CWC Brawlers. It seems like week after week, they are constantly putting up 84, 85, if not 86 stars, which is what they were able to put up against Gotoporks uh, Kriega, winning 86 to 82, a solid four-star victory for our Filipino friends over in CWC Brawlers, and they had some of the most remarkable stats here uh, in, uh, in week eight, three 10 v 10s, uh, CWC Brawlers picked up. They hit it 50% going 4 for 8 on their hit-ups, going 100% on their dips, going 7 for 7. They did have an 11 v 11 attempt uh, since they had those 3 10 v 10s. Uh, they did not get it, but they still, on their dips, they went 100%, 7 for 7, and they hit it 73% uh, for their Town Hall 9s. So literally from top to bottom, bottom to top, every single uh, Town Hall performed at their best here in this war. So congratulations to everybody over in COC Brawlers. Definitely a war to be proud of. Goldberg's Kriega has been known to take down some of the best clans in the league. Did not happen this war, but still had decent numbers. They had a 10v10 triple. Uh, they did go three uh, three for 15 on their hit up, something they have been struggling with throughout the season, uh, but still they were able to get three of them cleared. They only had one dip fill going six or seven and hit it 57% for their Town Hall 9s. Best of luck to both clans stepping into week nine. All right, guys, next up we have Above and Beyond, who took on none other than BD Unbeatables. Above and Beyond getting a solid five-star victory. Uh, the final 86 to 81. Above and Beyond looking very, very solid as well. Uh, wait till you guys hear these stats. Uh, very, very similar to CWC Brawlers. Uh, above and Beyond picking up two 10v10 triples. They also went uh, four for eight on their hit-ups, hitting at 50%. And they went 100% on their dips, uh, going eight for eight, as this war was spun at the traditional uh, 4, 10, 16 breakdown, and above and beyond's Town Hall 9's hit at a remarkable 70%, providing them with tons of scouts, uh, scouts which definitely benefited uh, their Town Hall 10's, again, picking up two 10 v 10's. Uh, on the BD Unbeatable side, uh, they did not, they unfortunately did not get a 10 v 10 triple this war. They definitely struggled uh, with above and beyond's bases, to say the least, considering they didn't have a 10 v 10 triple. Uh, they also struggled on the hit-ups. Uh, they went 2 for 12. 
So they're only able to get two of Above and Beyond's 11s doubled with their Town Hall 10s. And they went six for seven on their dips. So they had uh, they only had one dip fill. That other Town Hall 11 attack uh, went in order to ensure they got another one of Above and Beyond's 11s doubled. Trying to go for the 11 attempt, but did ensure that they picked up the second star on it. And their Town Hall 9s did hit at 53%, uh, but definitely can say uh, that they struggled with Above and Beyond's uh, bases. So huge shout out uh, to Above and Beyond's base builders putting up these tough bases. And not only, so not only performing defensively, but putting up these incredible, uh, these offense numbers as well. Two 10v10s, 50% on their hit-ups, and 100% on their dips. And it all starts with the Town Hall 9s, where they were able to hit at 70%. Again, guys, the final to this war, 86 to 81. Uh, above and beyond, definitely bouncing back. As they did take a couple, a uh, couple losses here uh, in the in in the last few weeks, but definitely rebounding against BD Unbeatables. Uh, best of luck uh, to both clans going into Week Nine. All right, guys. Next up, this is actually going to be uh, the final war that we have from our highlighted wars. None other than Nottingham taking on From Molten Lava. Nottingham getting the best uh, of From Molten Lava, winning eighty-four to eighty-three, getting a one-star victory. Uh, definitely a tough, tough loss for the guys and girls over in From Molten Lava. As I go ahead and break down the stats for you guys, uh, Nottingham picking up. Uh, one, they did have one 10v10 triple where they definitely outperformed from Mont Lava was on the hit ups, uh, on the, their 10 v 11 game, they went four for nine. So definitely completely smashed, uh, from Mont Lava's town hall 11s, uh, with their town hall 10s going four for nine. Uh, they still went, uh, on their dips, they went seven for eight, only having one dip fail. Uh, so definitely did. Uh, very, very well. One dip fill, you can definitely win pretty much, I mean, most of these wars, as long as you're getting a 10v10 and clearing the 11s, which is exactly what Nottingham did. However, their Town Hall 9s only hitting at 42%. Uh, they had to dip a lot of their, their Town Hall 10 attacks had to dip down to clear FML's Town Hall 9s. FML, however, uh, they had two 10v10 triples, uh, so they had one more than Nottingham. They had two 10v10 triples. Where they struggled was on the hit-ups, going three for 15. So a lot of Town Hall 10 attacks uh, got eaten up uh, trying to get Nottingham's Town Hall 11s doubled. Only managed to get three of them, and they went uh, five for seven on their dips. Uh, one of those uh, attacks was an 11v11 attempt, but still had two dip fills. Uh, where FML really, really performed, definitely outperformed Nottingham, was in the, with their Town Hall 9s hitting at 76%, had something like 9 or 10 scouts, uh, but that at the end of the day, Nottingham did go ahead and pull off the victory, and definitely congratulations to Nottingham uh, for pulling it off. All right, guys, here's a look at all the matchups going down this coming weekend in week nine. Again, only three wars left in the regular season until we get into playoffs. Uh, so by, by the end of week nine, we'll definitely be seeing some clans clinching their division. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, if you guys like the video, please make sure you guys leave it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe if you have not already. And please leave any comments, questions, or concerns down in the comment section below. We went ahead and covered all the standings, all the statistics, looked at some incredible replays from all of the highlighted wars, and definitely I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned to the channel for more CWO Premier action coming your guys' way, and of course, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.